Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a momentous day on this Friday early evening episode of Ted's Booze Cellar with me your most gracious host Ted. Now the reason why I say it's a momentous day and a momentous episode today is because today is the 75th anniversary of V-Day. The very notable moment in British history and the history of the whole world really where the official signing of the end of like the second world war essentially it, it basically it's the official day signing the end of the second world war at least in europe i mean there was minor conflicts that went on afterwards that were outliers of the second world war but it's a momentous day in the calendar and it's particularly momentous today because today is the 75th anniversary of that happening so i wanted to mark today with a drink that I feel is about as British as they come and also bears the name of one of the most notable parts of the British war effort during the Second World War. Namely, today we are going to be taking a look at the bottled version of Spitfire Amber Ale uh, by Shepherd Neem. Uh, it is a Kentish ale with substance and character and it quite proudly states on the neck of the bottle, the bottle of Britain. Wait, I just realised that's meant to be like a pun on the Battle of Britain. Oh, for God's sake! Uh, so it says here, toffee, toffee and spice aromas, hoppy bitter finish, crystal and ale malts, Kentish hops, the bottle of Britain. So I think they must have um, uh, changed the design of the bottle and added this little pun in here on the top of the bottle uh, to commemorate the 75th anniversary of day but um, I can't really blame them because it's quite a momentous occasion and um, it's it's quite nice that they um, they have we have an, an ale named after Spitfire um, because it was quite synonymous with the uh, victory of the British during the most trying period of the Second World War obviously you know there were Spitfires many many hundreds of Spitfires produced during the Second World War that participated in not only the Battle of Britain but also conflicts for air superiority over Italy and North Africa and it's it's funny because the, the Spitfire has become such a synonymous uh, bit of British you know bravery and spirit during the Blitz and the Battle of Britain even though it didn't shoot down at anywhere near as many planes as the Hawker Hurricane which is arguably a more, a more important plane to the British war effort during that time but still I feel it's only appropriate that we review a drink named after something as iconic as the Spitfire and the Spitfire was truly icon iconic and probably is rightfully remembered as the best air superiority fighter to this day um, at least of the Second World War and um, yeah I don't know I, I get the feeling like it it probably has earned its place in history despite the fact that the Hawk Hurricane shot down more German planes um, it was especially effective against the Japanese Zeros though because of its maneuverability and its ability to hold cannon emplacements um, I was going to say, this is a 4.5%, so it's about average strength for a lot of uh, British amber ales. Though I can't say, I quite like the colour, it's a very dark amber, so it's quite inviting, seems quite hearty, but not too, hopefully not too heavy. Um, I quite like the design of this bottle, actually. Um, it could, I think it could be, I don't know, I was going to say it could be a bit simpler, but I do like the simplicity of the design of the bottle and the label nonetheless, so I'm going to give it a... Uh, an 8.5 out of 10, I think. It's a, it's a nice to look at bottle and it's a very nice to look at uh, label as well. But let's give ourselves hopefully a good first impression by uh, giving it a good sniff and um, see if it holds up on that department as well. Mm. Yeah, it does have a very sort of traditional British amber ale sort of smell and. Um, Pretty sort of gold, lean, ambery sort of smell. So yeah, I'll give it a um, I'll give it a seven out of ten for the smell. It doesn't it doesn't like absolutely blow me away, but it's it's nice enough. It, it's not too pungent on the nostrils either, which is good. So yeah, seven out of ten for the smell. But let's taste it and give ourselves a good impression of what it's actually like. So uh, to anyone who is still alive who fought in the Second World War, my hat is off to you. You deserve all praise 
that comes your way. And to everyone else watching this video, bottoms up and happy 75th anniversary of V-Day. It's not bad. Um, it's quite smooth, but there is one problem with the texture, I think, that does hold it back a bit. Um, I, now, I've had ales before that have been fizzy, and there is a tiny, tiny bit of fizz in this one as well. And then, it's not too bad, but I do feel like it kind of spoils the finish a little bit. Um, there is a good bit of finish to this, and I feel like it probably would have been better served if it was like a traditional flat British ale. Um, that being said, the fizz is pretty nice, but I just feel like it would have been better served by being a tr more traditional flat British amber ale. Um, then... Then on top of that, I feel like as nice as, like, the... The sort of, like, ambery ale taste at the beginning and the bitter kick at the back of it, uh, your throat at the end, at the finish. As nice as those two aspects are, they aren't really brewed together as smoothly as I probably personally like. Um, the the way they're done individually is really nice, but like they could have been sort of like sort of melded or brewed together a bit smoothly, but I don't know, this this overall isn't actually that bad. It is a nice drink. It's just like there the individual aspects of it are really good, but there's certainly ways that they could have been implemented together in a more smoother and more um uh, and a, a slightly more natural way. Like you could you could certainly make an amber ale with all these characteristics where the characteristics individually meld together in a more effective way. But nothing's perfect, and and it's still pretty good. Like overall, it's not amazing, but it's like it's pretty good overall. And despite its faults, it's kind of representative of a lot of uh, British amber ales. And I suppose that's kind of keeping in the theme with the uh, theme of uh, the seventy fifth anniversary of V Day, because uh, you know, as haphazard and um, faulty at times that the British war effort was, and there was definitely a lot of things wrong with it, it's like it was ultimately one of the key contributing factors to bringing down the Axis powers, and in particular, obviously, the Nazis in Germany. So, um, yeah, I guess that's kind of keeping in theme with the day. With the day. So, it's, it's not bad. It's, it's a good ale. But there's definitely ways in which it could be brewed slightly more smoothly, in which the aspects could meld together in a more relaxing and sort of uh, intuitive way. But overall, I, generally speaking to like amber ale experts and um, enthusiasts, I probably would recommend this. I don't know if I could recommend it to all alcohol drinkers, but it's still good enough that I think I probably could go out of my way to buy it again, but I probably would pick other amber ales over this, um, to be quite honest. Um... I got this from the cop for about two-ish quid, I think. Um, it's probably more likely a £1.50 sort of drink, I'd personally say. But still pretty nice with maybe some pork scratchings. So I'll give it a... I don't know, like... 6.5 out of 10. It's not going to break any records, but it's nice enough. So, yeah. If anyone liked this video, leave a like, share and subscribe. If you have any interests in any of my other online activities, I'll leave the links to my social medias and other YouTube channels in the video description below. And if you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see me review on future episodes of Ted's Booster or any of my other series, such as my food reviews and stuff like that, let me know in the comments section below and I'll see what I can do. But, as always, until next time, have fun, stay safe with whatever you're doing, don't do anything I wouldn't do, uh, wash your hands, Take care of your family, drink responsibly, know your limits, and have a great 75th anniversary of V-Day. And until next time, I've been Ted, and I'll see you guys at the bar on Ted's Booster.
bye for now.